In this video, we're going to do some more work with the Maclaurin expansion. We're asked to use the series expansions of e2x for natural log of 1 plus x and sine x to expand the following functions as far as the fourth non-zero term. In each case, state the interval in x for which the expansion is valid. OK, so let's start with our expansions. We see that e2x is going to give us 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial dot 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 and so on and then we get up to x of the r, r factorial dot 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 and so on and that is valid for all values of x so this is valid for all values of x if we look now at the natural log of 1 plus x this gives us x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the fourth over 4 and then we go dot 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 and we get minus 1 r to the minus 1, x to the r, over r, and so on and so forth. And that is only valid for x strictly greater than 1, so let's put it here, strictly greater than minus 1, and less or equal to positive 1. So that's that expansion, and we've looked at that in the previous videos. And of course, these are in a formula book. If you can manage to remember them, all the better. Um, sine x is equal to, what have we got, x minus x cubed, over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial and so on and so forth and that is valid for all x as well. So the first two valid for all x, the natural log of 1 plus x strictly greater than 1 yet less or equal to positive 1. So let's look at some of these. Now this first one we've got 1 over e to the x. Now 1 over e to the x is e to the minus x. So what we're looking for is the expansion of e to the minus x. All we're going to do is take e to the x, and every time we see an x, sub in minus x. So we get 1, then we'll have minus x, then we'll have plus minus x squared over 2 factorial, then we'll have plus minus uh, x cubed over 3 factorial. And we're only interested in the first four non-zero terms. So that will continue, but we just want these first ones. So we'll have e to the minus x is going to be 1, minus x and then we can have plus one half remember negative x squared will give us a positive and then we'll end up with minus three factorial is just six so we can end up with uh, minus one over six x cubed and that itself again is valid for all x so there's our expansion of e to the minus x so valid for all values of x Cool. Done. OK, let's look at the next one. e to the 2x multiplied by e to the 3x divided by e to the x. So rules of indices, we're going to have e to the 5x divided by e to the x. It's e to the 4x. So e to the 4x, all we're going to do is use this one again and sub in 4x instead of x. So we get 1 plus 4x plus 4x squared over 2 factorial. And then we're going to get plus 4x cubed over 3 factorial. We only want the first four terms, and this will go on, of course. So we can say e to the 4x will be equal to 1 plus 4x. This is going to give me 16x squared over 2, which is going to give me 8x squared. And then we're going to get now 64x cubed over 3 factorial, which is 6. So 64 over 6, which looks like 32 over 3. So plus 32 over 3x cubed, and so on. So there we go, that's the expansion, and that too is valid for all values of x. So for all values of x, that's good to go, as with this one. Okay, let's look at the next one. We've got e to the power of 1 plus x. We can look at this slightly differently. Essentially, we've just got a constant. All this is saying is e to the first power multiplied by e to the x. So we can essentially just run a constant of e through the expansion of this which is going to be 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial. You might want to be a bit more explicit and write now 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 6. But essentially all we're doing is just using the rules of indices. e to the power of 1 plus x is e to the 1 multiplied by e to the x. And again, this is valid for all x. There's no constraints right there. So there we go, nice and straightforward. All you're doing is plugging in different values. Or in that case, you're just seeing that e to the first power is a constant. We can multiply that through. Cool, done. Right.
Let's look at this one now, the natural log of 1 minus x. Well, we know that the natural log of 1 plus x gives rise to x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the fourth over 4. They're the first four terms. That is what we will need. We know that this is valid for x strictly greater than minus 1, yet in turn less or equal to positive 1. don't know why I've put whatever it is. Whatever that's meant to be, that's meant to be a 1. Okay, so that's the expansion. That's the Maclaurin expansion for 1 plus x. So let's now look at 1 minus x. So if we want natural log of 1 minus x, every time we see an x, we're just going to put in a minus x. So minus x plus a minus x squared over 2 plus a minus x cubed over 3 and then minus minus x to the fourth over 4. Let's just look at this and consider the interval that that is now valid for. We're dealing with negative x. So if we place negative x in here, what we've got is negative x is strictly greater than 1, yet in turn less or equal to positive 1. We need to divide through by the negative x, which means that the inequality signs are going to get changed. So what we're going to have is 1 is going to be greater than x, which in turn is greater or equal to negative 1. And you might want to write that the other way around. You might want to write it uh, the, the other, so you can have them pointing the other way, but it's, it's entirely up to you. So you might want to put it that way around. Okay, essentially they mean the same thing though. 1 is greater than x, yet in turn x is greater or equal to negative 1. So let's now do that. So we get the natural log of 1 uh, minus x. It's going to be minus x. That's going to give me plus x squared over 2 which will end up with a positive, then we'll have minus x cubed over 3, and then we'll have on that one, what's that going to give us? So um, let's just check. I need to make that a negative, don't I? Let's, I've got my... That one needs to be a negative. My apologies. So let's make that a negative. Uh, this is now going to be... So that's going to be negative, isn't it? Let's get that negative, and we will sub that in. So that's going to be... Uh, and then we're going to get negative x to the fourth over 4. So that will go on and on, and we can say that the first four terms give us this, and they are valid for the following interval. x greater or equal to negative 1, yet in turn strictly less than 1. OK, let's look at the next one. I'm going to rewrite the next one. I'm going to write this now as the natural log of 2. Then we're going to have 1 plus 3 over 2x. So all I've done is factored out the 2. We can now write this. This is a product We've got the natural log of 2 multiplied by 1 plus 3x. So we can write this now as the natural log of 2 plus the natural log of 1 plus 3 over 2x. So just using your log laws. We know our log laws. So let's just have a think about this now. We're dealing with 3 over 2x. So our expansion will now look something like so. So before, what we would have had is the negative 1 and positive 1. So what we're going to now have is negative 2 over 3 and then we'll have x, and then we'll have positive 2 over 3. All I've done is divided through by the 3 over 2. OK, so let's do this then. What we're going to have then is the following. If we do, what we'll have now is the natural log of 2 plus... Now, we're going to expand out the uh, natural log of uh, 1 plus 3 over 2x. So what we're going to get then, using this one right here, we're going to get a 3 over 2x. That's going to be our first term, minus 3 over 2x squared over 2. Now consider that we've already got one term, so on this one we only need to expand and get the next term, because this one right here um, will count for our fourth one. So then we'll have now, we're going to need the plus, and then it's going to be 3 over 2x cubed over 3. So once we've got this, then we can just add it all up. So we can say now that the natural log of 2 plus 3x valid for x strictly greater than minus 2 thirds and equal or less than 2 thirds is going to be now the natural log of 2 plus 3 over 2x. Then if I square this, I'm going to get 9 over 4. So that's going to give me what? Minus 9 over 8. So minus 9 over 8 x squared. If I cube this, I'm going to get 27 over 8 over 3, uh, which is going to give me plus 9 over 8 x cubed. That sounds about right. So what we've got there is 27 over 8 over 3, um, which gives us now uh, 9. 
uh, 9 over 8 x cubed. So there we go. So that's nice and straightforward. So all we've done is expanded that. And we've seen that we only need four terms. So I've only expanded the first three terms of that to give us this one right here. Okay. So we're sorted with that one. What else have we got? The sine of x over 2. So let's do that one then. So we know that the sine, so let's do sine x, that's given to be x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. And we need the first four non-zero terms. So let's consider x to the seventh over 7 factorial. Okay, and that will go on and on. And that is valid for all x. So what we want then is sine of 1 half x or x over 2. That's going to give us now 1 half x, and then what we're going to have now is minus, and we're going to have, in fact, we can write it, it's entirely up to you, 1 half x cubed over 3 factorial. Then we're going to have plus 1 half x, uh, so it needs to be on the outside, doesn't it? I don't know why I put it there. 1 half x to the power of 5, and that's going to be over 5 factorial. And then we're going to have now minus 1 over 2 x to the 7th over 7 factorial. So if you just put these as x over 2, it might be slightly easier. So sine of 1 half x will be equal to 1 half x. Now this one is going to give me minus 1 over 8. And then we've got 3 factorial, which is 6. So that's going to give me minus 1 over 48 x cubed. That gives me 8, 1 over 8, uh, 3 factorial is 6, so we get minus 1 over 48 x cubed. I think you can do this on a calculator, it would be better. Um, okay, so what have we got here? So that's going to give me now plus um, what we can have, 1 over 2 to 5th is going to give me 32. So we can have 32 multiplied by 120. 5 factorial is 120, x to the 5th. And then this one is going to give me... Uh, oh. God, um, x to the 7th, what are we going to have? Uh, 2 to the 7th is going to give 1 to 8, multiplied by 7 factorial, which is 5040, I'm pretty sure. So let's push those through a calculator and see what they are. Um, in general, though, you, you can just do this. Um, I was hoping I'd be able to do it manually, but as you can see, that's not going to be the case. Uh, so that one is going to give us now 3... 8, 4, 0. So let's write this out. So sine of 1 half x is going to be equal to 1 half x minus 1 over 48 x cubed. And then we're going to have plus 1 over 3, what was it? 3, 8, 4, 0. 3, 8, 4, 0. 3, 8, 4, 0. x to the fifth. And then minus whatever this comes up to be. I don't fancy trying that uh, in my head at the moment. I'm sure it's possible. Um, no, 6, 4, 5, 120. So 6, 4, 5, 120, x to the 7th, and so on and so forth. So there we go. And that, again, is valid for all x. So looking back at it, you might just want to put it in like so. I was kind of hoping I'd have enough steam to go through and just finish it all off. But unfortunately, that's not going to be the case. So there we go. All uh, the first four terms for sine of x over 2. So basic take-home message is have a look at the original, which will be given as a formula, and just see how you can manipulate it. I'd suggest that's the most, um, the slightly freakier example, because you've got to do a bit more to it. Um, but in general, that should be perfectly fine.